Hi, this is Paul Bryant with South Coast Yachts, a San Diego Beneteau dealer. And uh, today I'm going to answer a question that a lot of people have been asking over the years. Had a few comments on uh, my YouTube videos about the lack of a traveler on the arch on the later generation of Beneteau Oceanus boats. This actually started in about 2011 with the new generation of boats, the Oceanus 41 and 45. Uh, these were the new latest generation hull designs with the chined hull um, and now the later generations like the Oceanus 38.1, 40.1, 46.1, 51.1 all have twin rudders chined hulls, chines in the bow, some of them have chines in the stern. But along with that goes the new rig configuration. So it's not any one thing in these designs that make the difference in the handling performance. It's a package that goes together. And that's sometimes people comment or they have the impression that they don't like the twin rudders or they don't like the arch or they don't like uh, the smaller jib why no overlapping jib for example these are some of the questions that we get and the answer is that this all goes together you cannot pick out one thing and say I don't like this because it's part of a package that goes together to create a design that its primary focus is to make a boat that is easily handled by a sh uh, short-handed crew. So in other words, single-handing, twin-handing, even on long passages in very difficult circumstances. So I'm going to try to explain to you some of the features of that package and mainly why these boats do not have a traveler on them. Um, and as I say, it's part of the package. So let me walk through here and explain a little bit of the design and how this came to be. So I'm currently on the deck of a Beneteau Oceanus 38.1 and one thing you'll notice is how large the foredeck is or basically essentially how far back the mast is and one thing that um, naval architects discovered in designing off, uh, offshore boats for racing but this, of course, like in auto racing and things like that, that what happens in offshore racing trickles down into pleasure boats, same with cars, um, is that they found that moving the mast back in the boat to the middle of the keel. So basically the keel is right here. And I'll go down below and give you a shot of the compression post and show you where the keel is on this particular boat. And so moving the mast back making the jib so it's hundred and four percent jib and the mainsail almost identical size so actually the main and jib are within a couple of feet of each other and this is the same on all the later generation Oceanus boats is that the main and jib are within a few feet of each other so you have the same uh, forces on either side of the keel so we'll go down below and I'll show you that so we're down below on this Oceanus, uh, Benito Oceanus 38.1 and one of the things that's immediately apparent is that this compression post is right in the middle of the salon, which may not appeal to many people, uh, but I'm going to show you the reason why that's there. And I believe that the compromise of having this in the middle of the salon is totally overwhelmed by the handling and performance improvements of these designs by having the mast located further back in the boat in the middle of the keel. And I'm going to show you where the keel is located on this boat or where the mast is located in reference to the keel. So that this keel bolt is the last keel bolt on the at the trailing edge of the keel. So these are the middle this is the middle of the keel and the front bolt is right about here somewhere. So as you can see this compression post is right in the middle of the keel and with a balanced main and jib 
uh, square footage area, you have the same forces on either side of the keel. So it creates a very, very uh, balanced rig and the performance enhancements are amazing. The boat is incredibly balanced. You can leave the wheel and trim the sails correctly. The boat will almost sail itself. So let me go and talk about the arch a little bit. So having shown you down below, uh, you can see as the mast moves back, traditionally you would have a traveler right here for your main sheet. But because you've moved the mast back, you can't have the traveler there. Uh, because of the companionway. So what Beneteau did was put the arch, they provided an arch so that you're sheeting on the main sheet on top of the arch and this has a number of benefits. So firstly you're kind of sheeting towards the end of the boom and so you have a lot more power on your main sheet than when the if the sheet was located in the middle of the boom so your end boom sheeting. Secondly you can see how close the boom is to the arch. So people complain that there's no traveler. The reason to have a traveler is to get your boom amidships when the traveler is located down on the deck. You have to move your traveler car up to windward to get the boom on center. Well, with this system, because the main sheet blocks are spread so wide, when you sheet that on hard, your main automatically comes to the center. So some people say, well, what if I want to put twist in my main and put the traveler car up and, and I want to move a tra have a traveler up here. Some people have added travelers here, but the main reason or the purpose of this design is to make it really simple for one or two people to sail this boat. Adding a traveler adds complexity and honestly you don't really need it with this design and so if you wanted to you could always add one but I know some people who have added a traveler and they hardly ever use it because you just don't really need it that much so you've got to keep in mind that the primary focus of these designs are easy sailing by one or two people and single-handing we have customers who single hand their 51s and even their 54s they take these big boats out by themselves and one of the reasons they're able to do that is because the ease of handling and the whole rig configuration is just very easy to control uh, single-handed or short-handed so that's the primary goal I'll show you a couple of other benefits of this whole design so like I say it's a package and so because they put the main sheet, up, main sheet up on top of the arch they took away the traveler from here so now the one thing that restricts the size of your companionway the length of this companionway on more traditional boats is that you have a traveler here if you take the traveler away you can make your companionway as big as you like and then when your companionway is bigger you can make your steps your companionway steps 45 degrees because you're not having to worry about hitting your head as you can see here where I'm going down below with the stairs at 45 degrees you don't have to worry about hitting your head I'll be honest a lot of our customers are over 50 they have bad knees, things like that. They also have dogs that want to go up and down the companionway. And a 45 degree companionway gives you that ability to have dogs go up and down. Um, you're not climbing up a ladder. There's less risk of slipping and falling. You have good hand holds on either side of this. So even with kids, dogs, older people with bad knees, um, like I'm getting, it makes it very easy. And all the stems from having this arch. So I hope that explains that whole design package a little cl more clearly and you understand that it is a conscious design and all of these elements go together in a complete package. So thanks for watching the video. If you want more information uh, please email me at paul at scyachts.com. You can find more of our boats on our website at scyachts.com. 
and uh, thank you so much for watching the video.